Former AW World Tag Team Champion Cash Wheeler will face charges for his July 2023 aggravated assault arrest. Plenty of details on that. Plus, Warner Brothers Discovery, the broadcast partner for AEW, has announced a joint sports streaming service in collaboration with Fox and ESPN. How could that possibly affect All Elite Wrestling? We'll let you know how. Speaking of arrests and pro wrestlers, Liv Morgan, the very latest on her legal situation after her arrest uh, last year. Carmelo Hayes explained his reasons for attacking Trick Williams at the conclusion of NXT Vengeance Day. A mystery arrival is on the way to NXT, according to vignettes at Vengeance Day and last night on NXT. Brian Pillman merchandise is going to be coming to WWE soon after his estate announced that they had agreed a Legends contract with WWE. The NXT Tag Team Championships are on the line next week on next week's episode of NXT. And the gate for Survivor Series 2023 in Chicago has been revealed. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's talk about Cash Wheeler as we now have an update on his legal situation. And it's not good news for the former AEW World Tag Team Champion. Orange County, Florida prosecutors decided last week to pursue charges against AEW wrestler Cash Wheeler from his July 2023 arrest for aggravated assault with a firearm. Now, Wheeler, real name Daniel, Wheeler was arrested on July 27th, 2023, following what was described as a road rage incident in which he allegedly flashed a gun at another party. A warrant was filed for his arrest the next day, and he pleaded not guilty on August 3rd, presenting himself for arrest on August 18th. Now, at that time, he was released on a $2,500 bond, ordered to turn in any weapons he owned, and to have no contact with the alleged victims. Prosecutors decided to move forward on Thursday, February 1st, with a hearing to take place on Tuesday, February 20th. Now, Florida law calls for a maximum penalty of five years in prison or five years probation, plus a $5,000 fine, all applicable for first-time offenders. Outside of the initial arraignment, Wheeler is yet to speak publicly on the matter. Now, at the time of the arrest, there was some concern about whether he would be able to travel to London, England for last August's All-In event, but he appeared on the show with FTR teammate Dax Howard against the Young Bucks as scheduled. If we get any more details on this moving forward, what it means for Wheeler, what it means for AEW, we'll let you know in a future video. Now, speaking of AEW, some big news that could possibly affect them moving forward. Now, it remains unclear if AEW will extend its soon-to-be-expiring television right still with Warner Brothers Discovery. The multinational mass media company has confirmed they have partnered though with two major organizations to create a new streaming service. As outlined in their press release, Warner Bros. Discovery is teaming up with ESPN, Disney, and Fox to form a joint streaming platform that will showcase the company's wide collection of sports programs. Once launched, this all-in-one sports service would offer fans access to several notable sports networks such as ESPN, ESPN2, ABC, FS1, FS2, True TV, TNT, TBS, and ESPN+. Now, across those networks, viewers would then be able to view thousands of high-profile sporting events within the realm of professional football, basketball, baseball, hockey, golf, and interestingly, UFC, which merged with WWE last year to form TKO Group Holdings. Now, there is currently no no word if professional wrestling content will be featured on the service as neither WWE or AEW was mentioned in the press release. As of now, the project is scheduled to debut on a new app in the fall of 2024, that being this year. Subscribers of this platform would also have the opportunity to bundle their experience with other streaming services such as Disney Plus or Hulu and or Max. Other details such as the potential subscription cost are planned to be announced in the future. Warner Bros. Discovery's Chief Executive Officer David Zasloff provided a comment on this joint venture sharing his excitement to unveil the results with consumers in the near future. He said, quote, at WBD, our ambition is always to connect our leading content with brands and with many as viewers possible. And this exciting joint venture and the unparalleled combination of marquee sports rights and access to the greatest sporting events in the world allows us to do just that, Zaslov said. This new sports service exemplifies our ability as an industry to drive innovation and provide consumers with more choice, enjoyment and value. And we're thrilled to deliver it to sports fans, end quote. So what do you 
you think this could be for AEW? Could we see AEW possibly be a part of this streaming service? Or could we see WWE or UFC be a part of this streaming service? Where do you think this is going to go? Where do you think it's going to impact pro wrestling? Is it going to impact pro wrestling at all? Let me know your thoughts and predictions about it in the comment section below. Now, let's talk about Liv Morgan. We spoke about Cash Wheeler's legal issues earlier on. Let's talk about Liv Morgan's because an update has been provided for current WWE superstar Liv Morgan and her arrest following her recent return to television. Now, it was recently reported that December 14, 2023, Liv Morgan was arrested in Florida for possession of marijuana, not more than 20 grams, and possession of drugs, possibly a synthetic cannabinoid. Now, the more serious charge of possession of drugs against the former SmackDown Women's Champion was dropped from the criminal case against her on January 2nd. The word making the rounds in WWE was that Morgan had stated the vape pen found in her vehicle was not her property. As noted in a new report from PW Insider, Morgan's criminal case in Sumter County, Florida has been officially closed as of February 6th. PW Insider wrote, quotes, The most serious charge against Morgan, possession of drugs, possibly synthetic cannabinoid, was dropped last month because the state of Florida had no way of proving its case. An assistant state attorney in the Sumter County told KOMO News, In order to prove the charge of uh, possession of THC, the state is required to prove that the THC came from synthetic sources and was not derived from plant sources. No labs in the state of Florida performed such tests, so we remanded it to county court as a possession of cannabis. Now, according to the arrest report, when a Sumter County deputy approached Morgan's vehicle, the odor of marijuana was detected. Although Morgan was slated for a February 20 hearing in regard to the only charge left pending her arrest, the charge of possession of marijuana, not more than 20 grams, PWInsider.com has learned that on January 31st, Morgan's attorney entered in a plea of nolo contendere in regards to the charge. That is a plea in which a defendant accepts conviction as though a guilty plea has been entered against them, but does not officially admit guilt to the charges against them. PW Insider was also told that a fine was imposed against Morgan. Court records list an assessment of $543, but not any additional fines. The charge of possession of marijuana, not more than 20 grams, is a first degree misdemeanor in Florida. It can be punishable up to one year in jail or on probation, along with a $1,000 fine. Conviction of possession also results in a six month driving license suspension, random drug testing, and all the reimbursement of all fees related to the sentence. Court records only refer to a fine being imposed. Of course, at the Royal Rumble, Morgan returned to the company for the first time since suffering an injury in the summer of last year as she entered in the 30 spots in the Women's Royal Rumble match. So this case is now closed when it comes to Liv Morgan. Now, Carmelo Hayes, people were waiting for an explanation as to why he attacked Trick Williams at NXT Vengeance Day. Now, WWE superstar Carmelo Hayes betrayed his best friend and tag team partner in the closing moments of NXT Vengeance Day and was set to comment last night. Carmelo Hayes came to the ring on last night's edition of NXT seemingly to address the shocking betrayal against his best friend and tag team partner Trick Williams. However... In lieu of actually saying anything of substance, Mello would be booed feverishly by the NXT Performance Center before simply saying two words. Mello just said, not yet, and left the ring as the crowd continued to boo and fans continued to wonder, why Mello, why? However, it wouldn't be the last of Carmelo Hayes on last night's show as he later returned to the ring for a seated promo. Confirming that he was indeed the person who attacked Trick Williams in the first place, his rationale was interrupted by Trick Williams' music, but no trick. It was all a ruse, as Trick wasn't in attendance, with Mello saying he was laid up in a hospital next to Booker T, of course, underwent a medical procedure recently, missing Vengeance Day and last night's episode of NXT as well. Asserting that Trick Williams deserved what he got, Mello went on to say further he was on a completely different echelon than Williams, ending the segment by reminding that Trick Williams, that he is a sidekick and that's all he'll ever be. Certainly the stage is set for the pair to have a big upcoming match, which would seem likely for the NXT standard deliver pre live event during WrestleMania weekend. Now, what was quite interesting about all of this is that the Performance Center crowd actually had to be reprimanded by WWE. Now, in an intriguing set of off-air notes from PW Insider, there was some information as to how the crowd reacted to Carmelo Hayes and how it shifted throughout the evening. After the crowd initially reacted to Hayes in the opening segment by chanting, F you, Melo, they were then requested to refrain from swearing. More specifically, the crowd was, quote, advised not to use F-bombs, a request which they would go on to comply with seemingly without incident. 
As I mentioned, when Carmelo Hayes came out later on in the show to actually make the reveal as to why he attacked Trick, no further F-bombs were dropped. So seemingly the crowd went along with it, but initially there was pretty strong heat in the performance center last night. Now, this mystery arrival in NXT, who do you think this could be? Because WWE has teased a new mysterious arrival on television, airing a vignette full of anticipation for the second time. Now, after the clip debuted at NXT Vengeance Day this past Sunday, it was shown again on last night's episode of NXT with simple white text on a black background. The only notable audio clues are the sound of walking footsteps. The text stated, quote, man has three faces, one the world sees, one his family sees, and the real one no one sees, but reflects the evil he truly possesses. Now, while it may not necessarily be a new star, it would seemingly be at least someone debuting a new character on NXT, but it's led to plenty of speculation as to who it could possibly be. Could it be someone as big as Kazuchika Okada? Could it be someone we've never seen before from the WWE Performance Center? Could it be someone coming from the main roster? Could it be someone coming back from injury? Who do you think this mystery person is going to be? Let me know your predictions about that in the comment section below. Now, big update if you're a fan of Brian Pillman Sr. And possibly your prayers may have been asked when it comes to Pillman merchandise from WWE. Because WWE has signed a Legends deal with the late Brian Pillman's estate as revealed by his daughter and the sister of NXT superstar Lexis King. In 2023, WWE signed former AEW star Brian Pillman Jr., who of course is the son of the legendary wrestler Brian Pillman. That would be Brian Pillman Sr., I guess. Pillman Jr. has gone on to become Lexis King on the NXT brand becoming one of the brand's quickest rising heels really on the roster on february 6th britney pillman evans the daughter of the late brian pillman posted a photo of verbiage from a legends agreement between the company and the pillman estate on her instagram stories she wrote quote i never thought i would see this day but after 27 long years my siblings and i finally own the rights to our father's legacy I just want to say thank you to all the fans for keeping my father's name alive. This is all because of you. And thanks to WWE for making this happen. Stay tuned for new merch coming soon. So it would appear finally we're going to be getting some Brian Pillman merchandise moving forward in WWE. Now, going back to NXT, we're going to be having an NXT Tag Team Championship match next week. After making appearances on both Raw and SmackDown since the Royal Rumble, Bron Breaker didn't just vet offers over the past week. He also won a big NXT tournament at Vengeance Day. On last night's February 6th NXT, the winners of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Tournament were ringside as the Wolf Dogs were on the scene. Bron Breaker and Baron Corbin were on commentary for a tag team match between the team of Axiom and Nathan Fraser, taking on uh, Idris Anofe and Malik Blade. After the match, however, the Wolf Dogs ran into the ring and knocked out the winners, Axiom and Fraser, but their beatdown was short-lived. The family, Tony D'Angelo, Channing Stacks Lorenzo and Adriana Rizzo, interrupted and accepted a title match with the Dusty Cup winners, which Corbin demanded for next week. So this one is going to be taking place next week. Where do you think this one is going amid all of the rumors and signs that Bron Breaker is on his way to the main roster, either SmackDown or Raw. Could we be seeing a split up of the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic winners or could we see them both hold titles and make their way to the main roster together? Let me know your thoughts about that as well. Finally, an update when it comes to Survivor Series last year. Of course, a historic event featuring an incredible main event, the return of Randy Orton after close to 18 months out of the ring and the return of CM Punk to WWE for the first time since he walked out of the company nearly 10 years prior. While it now feels like a decade ago, it was only two and a half months ago when WWE held their annual Survivor Series premium live event in Chicago, Illinois, as well as an episode of SmackDown the night before. Now, the PLE got plenty of notoriety at the time, both for the returns of Randy Orton and CM Punk and the financial success of the event touted by WWE Chief Content Officer Paul Triple H Levesque following the show. As it turns out, he wasn't kidding about the success. WrestleNomics and Polestar report that the 2023 Survivor Series generated a gate of $2.240 million with 16,579 tickets sold. Meanwhile, SmackDown from the night before is said to have drawn a gate of $982,000 with 15,777 tickets being sold. Both numbers are in line with previous figures provided by WrestleTix, which had estimated Survivor Series distributed over 17,000 tickets, while SmackDown was said to have distributed close to 16,000 tickets. The numbers would seem to confirm that the 2023 Survivor 
Survivor Series was the highest grossing event in the history of the PLE, as well as the highest grossing WWE event in Chicago since WrestleMania 22 in 2006. All told, the 2023 Survivor Series grossed over $1 million more than the gate in both the 2022 and 2021 Survivor Series premium live events, which took place in Boston, Massachusetts and Brooklyn, New York, respectively. While WWE's financial success has continued since Survivor Series, the promotion cannot seem to keep itself out of controversy at the moment, in addition to the on-screen drama involving The Rock, Cody Rhodes, and Roman Reigns heading into WrestleMania. There's also the controversy surrounding the serious allegations made against Vince McMahon. But there you go, guys. This is the latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.